Hey guys, Al here, Vitalize Seed. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about phosphorus cycle. I'm getting a lot of questions this time of year on uh, soil tests, getting, guys are getting ready to put in cover crops, or food plots, <clears throat> garden cover crops, etc. And one of the questions often comes back is, hey, my phosphorus is low, should I apply phosphorus? Um, we want to understand how phosphorus moves in the soil. Um, so phosphorus is very immobile in the soil profile. Um, so if you're in a no-till system, uh, like we are on our farm, <clears throat> There really is zero point in applying phosphorus in a conventional granular form. Um, phosphorus <clears throat> in that form is not going to move in the soil. It's going to bind up with micronutrients, pl clay particles, organic matter, etc. A lot of tests maybe show one to two inches of movement. Um, that's a, quite a bit different than if we're putting phosphorus in furrow, um, say on a on a planter. You know, if we're running corn or something like that, and we're putting two by two where it's literally right, right in where the roots are going to go. Um, <clears throat> It's a lot different, but for most people who are in a gardening situation, a horticulture situation, an orchard situation, a food plot situation, um, <clears throat> they don't have access to that. Even if they have a no-till drill, they're likely not putting phosphorus right in the root zone. Um, <clears throat> so when you look at this chart, you kind of get an understanding of, well, what makes phosphorus available? Well, one, natural weather, right, rain, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, the other way it, it get, becomes available is through organic matter breakdown. So obviously, if cows <clears throat> or wildlife, deer, etc., cetera, um, <clears throat> are defecating on a field, um, you're going to have phosphorus content in there. Plant matter um, decaying is going to have phosphorus content in there. But how did that plant matter get phosphorus in the first place, especially if it's an area where phosphorus has not been um, applied? You know, think of a forest, for example. If you took, cut a tree down, um, an oak tree, right, it would have a lot of phosphorus in that, in that tree. Well, how, where did that come from? Um, one, a really diverse <clears throat> and robust root system. Um, also, a really high intensity fungal network. Um, as we know, over time, forests end up being more fungal dominated <clears throat> than, say, um, you know, a conventional agricultural field or, or starting of agriculture is going to be more bacteria dominated. <clears throat> so, as we use highly diverse systems like the Vitalize Seed 1 2 system, where you're fun focusing on biological components and maximizing that communication. <clears throat> We can increase fungal activities in the soil, as you see here, and we're gonna actually help to increase the phosphorus solubility in that soil profile for plant uptake. So guys, when you do your soil test this year, if you feel like, man, my phosphorus is really, really low, I just feel like I need to apply it, <clears throat> I don't often recommend tillage, um, but if you're really dead set on applying phosphorus <clears throat> in a conventional form, say a triple 19 or something, then I probably would say you should do a light incorporation or you should consider finding a different source of phosphorus um, and or look at some biological inoculants so we can stimulate fungal networks in the soil and bacteria that's going to help solubilize that phosphorus. Check out vitalizeseed.com, guys. Hopefully this was helpful.